everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Super excited to host one of my very closest friends here on the island, Dan Baker, for this episode. Dan, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are you excited to be here? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to I don't we're going to talk about everything on this podcast, like <laughs> everything and nothing. And it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, to kind of summarize some of the things that I know that I want to talk to you about is um, this journey of self-love that you are mm. on. Also, the feeling of being in tribe. So if anyone who's listening, you're also on a self-love journey, also on finding your tribe, this podcast is for you, which I feel like this is kind of everyone. <laughs> um, and to start off, I want to just share like how I know you. We met on the island here wow four years ago almost wow time flies when you're having fun is it like march of 2020, 2020. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just broken up with someone i went to my friend isa's balcony and you and isa were doing yoga on the balcony and i think you were in shavasana at this point and just laying down and i just like come up there like crying like wow and you're just like who is this girl yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what was your first impression of me i so i was hanging out with isa and we were at her house and you were it was just like who is this girl crying on the balcony <laughs> <laughs> it was like and it, it was i mean it, and it was like it was just like wh i don't know like what are we supposed to do with her like she's and and Isa just kind of she just kind of had this like nonchalant. It was just like oh yeah, that's that's just Brittany. She's just it's she's like just she's crying. just like doing her thing. And I was like and I was like, are we supposed to do anything about this? She's like, no, it's cool. <laughs> I love shout out to Isa. I love her so much. She's so great at like hosting whatever is coming through. Yeah. You know, just like letting it all go through you. Being, um, I really love her for that. Um, and then our friendship progressed. Um, and we were in like a, we call it like a lockdown crew together where like many people on the island were not hanging out with anyone. And then we made our little bubble of like 30 of us and we had a group chat and like we all hung out every day. It very mm -hmm. much felt like we were in tribe. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon after that, uh, you, me, Isa, and another friend, Adrian, we all got bungalows, like we're literally right next to each other. And... So when we had a curfew here on the island where you couldn't leave your house after 10 p.m. So we would all come home. We'd put in our little group, like our four group chat of just the four of us. Maybe there was also other people. But we all hung out for the four of us every day. And we would just be like, okay, whose balcony are we going to be on? Yeah. Like, you know, and we'd drink cacao or tea. And I loved it. Yeah, like same. when I remember when lockdown ended, there was like a sadness. Mm. There was like a grieving. And it was like. Because we were all, everybody was returning to their life as usual. And it yeah. was like, oh, but I kind of, I was really enjoying that, that little pod that we had yeah, created. Yeah, like our bubble of tribe, yeah. basically. And I don't, I don't feel like any of us was really consciously aware of how special it was. I don't, I think we've talked about this before. Like, yeah. we like, n we like reminisce about those times when the like we didn't have COVID on the island for the whole first year. So like a lot of the stuff that was happening was just like on our screen. Right. And then when you put the screen away, we were just like playing like little kids. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel a little bit guilty saying it, but that, that year was one of the best years of my life. Like mm -hmm. I, I look back with such nostalgia and, um, yeah, it was it was it was such a special time and it like I felt like I felt like I was on a satellite like watching the earth. <laughs> it was like I would I could I could like plug into what was going on globally through my phone. Mm -hmm. But if I turned it off, we were just in our own little satellite. Like our like own literal space. like different planet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this planet was full of you know, lots of beach time, playing. I remember waking up in the morning. So if you don't know Dan, he does amazing vocal chanting where it's kind of like these guys in India that are like, you know, gurus and they're like, oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. So he would do this in the shower in the morning and I, our bungalows were like right next to each other. So I would wake up to 
that was my morning meditation when I was like making my smoothie in the morning was listening to Dan chant. Oh, and it man. was so grounding for me. I really needed that at the time. And I don't know if you realize like how much I really loved it. I really loved listening to you. And also just this feeling of like, you can hear all of your neighbors and all of your neighbors are your best friends. And so you love hearing them, like whatever they're up to, if they're on the phone or if they're chanting or like crying, whatever. It's like, this is, this is my people. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. And then we spent so many weekends going to. Well, and, and yeah. I would, I would just add that, yeah. that, um, that was the beginning of me chanting. Mm. Like that was, I was, um, you know, there was a lot of growth during that time, but one of those threads was that I was finally opening up to my voice, opening mm. up to like a chanting practice. And so that was, um, it, that was, it was just transformative for mm. me to, and it, like, I like, like to be heard mm -hmm. was such a big deal for me. Um, I remember the first time that I came home and just started ohm chanting um, I started crying like five mm. minutes in I was and it was like just just the opening up and and allowing my myself and my voice to be heard and it was like knowing that other people could hear me um, but it was also like knowing that it was you mm -hmm. um, people who loved you right it was yeah that that helped me open up because it was it was safe it was like mm -hmm. I could do that and and I wasn't I didn't have to be worried about the judgment or mm -hmm. or whatever and I think this is a perfect example of how when you're in a supportive tribe, like like that itself is already a transformation. Like mm. you're able to access parts of yourself that maybe you didn't have the confidence before or you had been shut down. So I'll ask you, why, why did it take that moment to, like why weren't you chanting before, or using your voice before? <sighs> Man, I, I think the simple version is just a self-consciousness and a fear of being seen mm. and a fear of being heard, a fear of speaking up and using my voice. Um, and it was, it was, it's one of these things, you know, there's a whole, there's a huge story around it. Um, and it was, it's like my whole life, um, you know, I, I have a voice, I have a, a radio voice, you know, yeah, all you American. You have a podcast voice. <laughs> yeah. Like this, this all American, you know, um, radio announcer voice. And my whole life people would stop me on the street and they'd be like, you need to start a podcast. You need to do voiceovers. You need to do this. And, and I, I knew that and they were, they were right, but I could, I could never, I could never get over myself, my own, you know, my own fears, my own limiting beliefs, my own ego. And, and it would, it would build it like, it was like pressure building mm -hmm. to the point where finally at, at that time, um, you know, it, it was actually, um, what, what really blew it open was right as COVID had started, like it was like two weeks into lockdown. I, um, I did Bufo mm -hmm. and there was there was just like this moment uh, this like flash during that experience where it was like it was it was as if everything that existed my entire reality everything ev everything that exists was emanating from my throat mm -hmm. and um and it was like a knowing it was like i don't need to prove it I, it was like i i knew it in that moment it was like my entire reality is is coming from from this place mm -hmm. the throat chakra the throat chakra and that's when so i i came out of that and i was like okay quit quit av yeah, I, I have to stop avoiding this mm -hmm. stop fucking around you need to do something about this uh, this power, whatever this is. And that's when I went and I, I just, I found the first vocal teacher mm -hmm. I could find. And he started, he, you know, he got me going and that's when I started the practice. And, um, and so it was, it was really like, like this, this pressure over my entire life had, had like opened up and, mm -hmm. you know, expanded. And I feel like we all have these gifts that we're meant to give the world. And it literally is like energy going through us that wants to come out in different ways. And I want to just really touch on like you were saying it was fear. But what was the fear of that you would share this and what be rejected, be kicked out of the tribe? Like what was 
because a lot of people feel this like I am good at this thing but then they don't do the thing so I'm interested to hear like what was the real fear fear below it mm. I f I think it was just a fear of rejection mm -hmm. a, f a fear of of what other people would think um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really like beyond that. I'm, it's it's hard okay. to say, but but yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I you know, and it, I guess it's also like um, there there's something about it's like a fear of responsibility, like owning it, like um, like if I'm going to speak up and my voice is going to be heard, that that what's coming out um, matters. Mm -hmm. and 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 it's like and i'm still dealing with this but it's this feeling of like like it doesn't matter but then if i'm going to do it i i have to i have to really like i don't know it's like i have to be responsible with mm -hmm. it and and it's like a power, a power yeah, that you need to use wisely yeah and like like there's there's like a fear of like saying the wrong thing or mm. doing you know and, and then and then what other people think of that and you know that for for a long time like you know this is like a past life at this point but it's like for for through my 20s and into my early 30s i was mostly just drinking and smoking weed like i was i was treating my body like shit um and there was this um you know it's like smoking and mm -hmm. it, i was i was i was hurting myself and and it was and it was like i can't there was there was this sort of inner knowing that i can't start using this power until I clear that out until mm -hmm. I stop like stop smoking as long as I'm smoking there's no point in mm -hmm. in using this because I'm, I'm I'm using it at a at a highly degraded vibration mm -hmm. and so a lot of it too was you know this this period of stopping drinking stopping smoking like like letting that you know years of like flushing that out before I was like, okay, now I'm in a vibrational state that I, that I can start growing into this ability. Yeah, because I mean, everything is vibration. We are all channelers in our own way of whatever gift we're meant to give the world. And I will tell the audience, whoever's listening and watching, that uh, when I listened to you chant in the morning, one, knowing that you're someone I love, I, I felt, but also there was like a somatic, like in my body I was experiencing it felt like a low key psychedelic trip, you know, and this is, this is the power of chanting. Like it is literally taking all the words out and it's just transmitting vibration. And this is something we talk about a lot, like in yeah. different ways, like vibrational transmission. And so it makes sense that you were like, I need to be a clear channel of this vibration. Yeah. It, it like this, this is, it's literally vibration. It's the literal, tr it's like, to me, this is the most direct way to transmit vibration. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's like spirit coming in and then, and then vibrating out. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, if I'm not, um, being healthy, if I'm not, if I'm not in a, a good vibrational state, then I, I have no business transmitting that mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I, I totally resonate with that because I also, with my own journey of my podcast, like I had a YouTube video f or YouTube channel for two years. I can't even watch the videos mm. from like, you know, beyond, no, four years now. But like if you go back and watch some of the, my earlier videos, like the vibration that is coming through me is not, is not who I, it's not my authentic vibration. I was like putting a lot of masks on, very in my masculine, like thinking that this is what I needed to do in order to be accepted in mm. order to get my and then i just was like fuck all that like i just want to be me <laughs> i want to share my podcast and maybe i'll disagree with what i say on my podcast later but in this moment this is my authentic self of me on my journey you know yeah. Yeah. so i agree with i totally resonate another thing i want to say before we go into the self-love and all these other deep things <laughs> we're, we're always talking about something deep uh, but i wanted to share how on the island during lockdown, a big part of my highlight reel of things that I loved to experience was um, this group of like about 30 of us. We would go to a part of the island called Wainam, which is like mm. my favorite place in the whole world. <laughs> we were just there recently for New Year's, which was epic. 
and it's just this tiny little beach and you have to take like you have to drive 45 minutes from where we normally live take a boat another 10 15 minutes around or a hike or hike you love or to hike, hike another hour and a half yeah. so it's like it's like a it's a whole journey to get there it is not an easy place to get to and during lockdown the bungalow the restaurant wasn't even open so we would have to bring all of our own food we'd bring our own speakers we would just make our own party there Mm -hmm. and every two weeks we would all take acid and just play like little kids like literally be naked we'd have little floaties we'd like you know swim and like oh it was so (laughs) much fun (laughs) and we were all growing like we were waking up spiritually while we were playing right and i and like out of the 30 people at some point during the day, you and I would find each other just organically. We'd probably be out in the water with a little floaty. And we would just talk for hours and hours about whatever was moving through us in this moment. You know, like relationships, life things, like you talking about chanting or like self-love. Whatever was coming up, but we were just like in it together and we were figuring it out and doing it in like the most fun way. Yeah. And I really wanted to share that, that like... When you wake up spiritually, you can do it in tribe. You can do it in a way that where you're playing and it's fun and it's light. It doesn't need to be (laughs) painful. It doesn't need to be like go in a dark room and take ayahuasca and like, you know, be with yourself until you figure out. It's like we can just figure it out together and it's okay that we don't have it all figured out because we're doing it together. Yeah. And I I think for me and and I imagine for, for a lot of us that that um you know that practice Mm -hmm. of of doing that was was a a big transformation because it was like um to especially you know taking acid in a group of people and there's a lot of processing going on a lot's coming out you're seeing a lot and at any given point someone's having a breakdown crying everyone's hugging them yeah and and it's like the the act of doing that was it basically it was dissolving the ego mm-hmm. and it was like oh my god i can i can break down and be i can i can dissolve into a blob mm-hmm. in front of these people and it's okay and and, and i'm still we're, we're still together we're still, like instead of running away like there mm-hmm. you know um before you know years before that i would th- there was always this anxiety and the, you know i would avoid it and it would be like oh i'm i'm I, I need to go be by myself, go hide behind the rocks and be alone or something. And in and order it, to open up like that. Yeah. And, and, and so it's a big thing to, it, it was a big transformation for me to, to go into that instead of running away to go, go towards it. And then in like alchemize it with a, with the tribe yeah, and be accepted. And then, and I, I feel like it was, you know, it was a serious, I mean, it's always a, like ego deaths all the time, but it's mm-hmm. like, that was a big one was yeah. like, like allowing myself to, to allowing my ego to be seen, mm-hmm. you know, these parts of myself that I'm not particularly proud of or whatever. And it's okay. And it, yeah. like, let it dissolve away. I really imagine all of us as these little kids that just want to play all the time. And then throughout our lives, we've been shut down in different ways mm-hmm. or we had to put on a mask in order to be accepted by our family, by society, by our, our whatever community we're part of. And then in these moments where it's safe to be, it's safe to let all, it's like one by one every two weeks that we were just like letting down all of these masks. Mm -hmm. And then you got a choice when you left the beach, you know, the next day, like, do I want to bring this with me or do I want to just like be like, fuck that. I don't need that one anymore. Like it's safe to be me, safe to be my authentic self. And wow, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking (laughs) about it because it was so special, you know? Yeah. And again, we didn't realize how special it was. We were just like, wow, we're playing, you know? Um, yeah. and I, this is why I feel so called now to keep creating these spaces where people feel safe to be in whatever way and whatever transformation they're currently in. But it's just like, is it safe to feel? Is it safe to be in my body? Is it safe to not have it all figured out? Mm. And like, am I still allowed to be in the tribe dynamic? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. 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 And yeah, and and so I I look back on that, and you know it was like, and and it's funny because I knew even at the time that it was happening, I could sense it, but it was like we were, 
it, I just had this feeling that it was like, man, the rest of the world is going through this like intense suffering. You know, they're mm -hmm. stuck in their apartments in the mm -hmm. winter in New York or something, and everyone's like fighting and you know and it, it was like we were we it was it was like a timeline split where yeah. we were off in this utopia <laughs> like literally the new earth yeah. like we're just here vibing yeah. <laughs> drinking coconut like this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> and and i and i knew this cuz cuz like um then i returned to the US later you know mm -hmm. like like 2 years later and it was it, it was like it was like two branches of a tree had had grown and mm -hmm. then i was like returning to this place and i just i felt so just like disconnected i, I just couldn't i couldn't relate to what what their experience yeah. was yeah because yeah, we literally had such a different experience and again there's no judgment on like wh what one is better or worse i feel like both were opportunities for people to grow and wake up spiritually um, and I'm just really grateful that my higher self, because I was traveling at the time when COVID hit and I could feel that it was coming. Like I was in all these, I was in five different countries and three different continents, like South America, America, North America. I stopped in Europe for like one second and then went down to South, South Africa. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I don't want to be locked into any of these spaces. And my soul was just like, get to Thailand. And I got here two days before the country lockdown. Right. I'm so grateful for that because, yeah, I could have experienced all of these things stuck somewhere locked inside. But how much nicer is it to grow our spirituality in a place that is beautiful, in a place that is safe and mm. warm all year round? And, like, and I'm sharing this to, like, let people know that you can also grow your consciousness in a way that feels really good in your body because we in the spiritual community there is i feel this misconception misconception in my opinion that it has to be painful mm. you have to disconnect it's like no we can grow and we can connect deeper it can everything can be an opportunity for connection to mm. ourselves to our higher selves to our tribe um if we let go of this belief that it has to be painful well and and it's also it's not that it was without difficulty either for sure you know and and it's it's <laughs> i mean you met me crying <laughs> right yeah it's like there were there were still stories and dramas within that and and there was still um yeah it yeah i kind of lost my train of thought there but um yeah i guess the point is that we weren't all just you know living the best life ever like we didn't have COVID on the island but we had this huge wave of dengue that everyone got right which is if you don't know what dengue is it's like you feel like you're dying i've had COVID and dengue and i feel like in my opinion many people have had both say that dengue is worse like you right. are so sick and i remember you isa and adrian like getting into my bed at one point and just being like you're okay and i was just crying i was in so much pain i was just so 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 much pain and that was also a moment where I was having the spiritual awakening in a beautiful way because I was like, I love you guys so much and I literally cannot do anything right now. Like mm. you guys are just completely taking care of me. I don't have a choice and I feel so held by my tribe right now. Like, and Issa's just like, we love you. You're okay. You know? And I'm like, wow, <laughs> lots of crying. Yeah. But that, I remember that was a really big moment, like in my body of feeling like, oh, I'm held, like I'm safe, like people show up for me. I can right. fall apart and people are here, you know, like you guys were literally in my bed one night, just cuddling and just being like, we're here. We're I just remember that. You. Yeah, yeah I, re I remember that. Yeah. And well, and, and yeah, I guess that I, I found the train of thought. It was, it's that even, even in utopia, e like I can, I can literally go to the opposite end of the world, but, um, and it's amazing, but my baggage still comes with me like yeah. i th there is a degree of like running away that's involved and and i think a lot of you know a lot of what i was part of what i was waking up to also was that you, like i i'm still carrying these things you can't just run away and just because you're in paradise means that suddenly your problems are solved it's, it's yeah there, and a lot of know? people have this very hard slap in the face when they come to Koh Phangan because mm -hmm. you can't run away from yourself you know, like, and when you're in such a paradise like location, mm. it's very obvious that it is you <laughs> that is causing a lot of these things. Right. Like, through your own negative beliefs, you're creating this reality where, yeah, sometimes things suck. It's like, know? well, and yeah, you're looking around and everything's beautiful and perfect, you know, 
but it's like why am i sad yeah like why do i feel or you know why do i why am i depressed why do i feel these negative emotions when you know in, in the appearance it, like everyone's everyone's having fun or mm -hmm. you know every, it's like party island so there's this this kind of pressure to to always like a toxic positivity yeah that in it, and so it, it puts that in contrast really mm -hmm. intensely where it's like it really forced me to kind of look start looking in more because it was like why like like i thought if i was here that i wouldn't feel sad anymore and all it's like, my why problems do I feel, are solved right yeah <laughs> it's like okay so what's what's actually going on and yeah. it's like yeah. which is the beautiful like opportunity for growth like this is what i like to say is that challenges come with us wherever we are in our life and it's the point of life is not to have everything go smoothly all the time mm -hmm. otherwise we would just stay in spirit we wouldn't come into these bodies and experience this reality you can choose also to have those challenges feel good in your body. Like I'm mm -hmm. going, like right now, fairly sick. You know, this we need to move today. There's things happening in my life, right. but I don't feel like sad about them. I don't feel that they are. I'm not connected to the story of them. It's like I am right. grounded in who I am. I love myself. I love my reality, and these things. Okay, like how is this coming to serve me? Like what we mm -hmm. were just talking about right before we started the podcast. And I was like, I don't have the answer for this specific situation. And when we went, we, we both love doing Rafe. So we did some Rafe and meditated before we did the podcast. And when I was in the meditation, I was asking myself, okay, how is this serving me? Like, how can I use the situation in a way to grow my consciousness? How can this be a positive thing? Right. And I think when you shift that dynamic, you stop w basing... You stop saying things are happening to you and you start saying things are happening for Order. you, through yeah. you, whatever. And it can be you, like you basically become the master creator of your reality. And a lot of people go and they base their reality on external things, you know, and mm. or how much can they consume in different ways? You know, that's another way to like fill the hole. Yeah, you run away, you yeah. fill it with other external yeah. things. Yeah. So. Now I want to talk about what we were just talking about yesterday at Delhi Devi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at Wainam this last New Year's, um, as we do, we got into our little, we had like a whole group of like 30 friends. That's this funny number that keeps popping up. But um, there was a big group of us. And then you, Faraday, and Feda, we all just kind of became this little pod yeah. where we <laughs> went out everywhere together. And it was so much fun. And we were just like vibing hard, you know, yeah, and yeah. having the best time. And then as it happens organically you and i just drop into this really deep conversation and something in my psyche was just like wait i want to know what your chiron is. so if you don't know much about astrology there's something called your chiron which is you can look it up you can google uh find my chiron and you can put in your birth information and do it do it do it yeah <laughs> Um, and then it will tell you like what your chiron is and then google that and say like for for yours it's chiron and taurus your Chiron is your biggest opportunity for growth in this timeline as a soul, like your soul chose. And it can also be it's your biggest pain point and your biggest opportunity for growth. So for some reason in this c conversation, I was like, I want to, I've never asked you, what is your Chiron? And so we looked it up and then I Googled like Chiron and Taurus and I started just reading it to you and you were like, what the fuck? Like what? Yeah. So tell us more. What is, tell us what is yours? Yeah. It was, so that, o that opened up a portal. That mm. like that was big, um, and that was only like a week ago. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. So my Chiron is in Taurus, and I'm I'm an amateur astrologer. Like I've I've been into it, but I'm not really equipped to talk about the technicalities of it. But what it what really resonated was that um, I have this wounding in like f like two or three primary areas um one is my sense of stability mm -hmm. um, my sense of home and um sort of safety and, re and and really like when you get that's when you get under that layer it's like trusting the universe just um feeling feeling safe in the universe and um and then the other one is uh, a sense of self-worth mm -hmm. um, like, like loving yourself yeah loving myself sense of value um, that I'm important 
and and so so it's like there's my whole life um you know one of the reasons why this really resonated was because my whole life i feel like at any minute there could be an earthquake it's like any minute my entire reality my my entire my stability like my so constant survival mode constant constant fight or flight my nervous system is always in survival mode i'm always um yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm always thinking of backup plans. What do I do if I need to leave tomorrow? But hold on, you know. it's just so people understand, it's not like a literal earthquake. But you're just like something can go wrong at any moment. It's it's a yeah, it's a metaphorical earthquake. Yeah. Like yeah. my like like the pillars of my stability mm-hmm. could crumble at any minute, and I have and I feel like I need to be prepared for that all the time. And a lot of my day-to-day activities are in this are coming from this sense of like um this sort of fight or flight feeling of like mm-hmm. like okay you know I, and and it, and it and and it it's um it it's it's like a lower vibration state to be operating like mm-hmm. you're not you don't build a kingdom <laughs> like like in the like that it's like you need if stability you, yeah, you need yeah. groundedness yeah you know? so so I find this super interesting. Um, so yesterday when we were talking, you were saying like your reaction to this instability that you weren't consciously aware of that you were, cause it's also a belief. Like you believe right. that everything's going to go to shit. So then your reaction to that belief was what? So yeah. So there, okay. There's two threads. Mm-hmm. Um, one, I don't know if I mentioned this one, but it, or I think maybe I did, but it's like, um, Looking back over my life, I've, I've, I, in now in this light now, I can see that I, I have this pattern of, um, I have my life, I have my stability, I have my, my home, my girlfriend, my job, whatever. And if, if one of those pillars drops out, like if I lose a job or, um, break up with the girlfriend or something, my initial, my, my instinct reaction is to abandon ship to, to (laughs) like everything. Yeah, th- throw the whole thing out. It, like, like okay, like like this this thing dropped out, and it's like it's the kind of thing where everybody else would look at me and be like, "What's the big deal?" Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like get a new job. You don't even need a girlfriend. Like, what's mm-hmm. what's the problem? But but my my nervous system, my instinct is like run, get, like jump ship and go find go start building a new boat somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I've done this. I've I've done this a couple of times. I've made major life like San Francisco to New York, Minnesota to Florida, like um, New York to Southeast Asia. It, on these, um, it, it, from this this gut reaction. So something would go wrong, and then you would literally just leave the whole life yeah. that you built behind and throw just... the whole thing out. <sighs> Okay. which is which is yeah, so yeah. which is so ironic and counterproductive it's like what i actually want the most my biggest wound is stability i want stability more than anything and and you're a capricorn like your son isn't like you are here to be the most grounded person around and have stability well and and i i also think that part of the reason why i'm so grounded is because i've i've learned to okay. be grounded mm-hmm. amongst what what to me it feels like chaos mm-hmm. and so even even in my what i would say is an ungrounded state i'm mm-hmm. like oh my god i'm falling apart other people look at me and like they still feel groundedness around me like the, even even when i feel like i'm falling apart they still feel you're safe. offering this groundedness for everyone else except for yourself right exactly so what was the other thing you said there was two yeah and so the, and then the other one is my coping mechanism so so part of that stability the the is is a fear of losing what i value Mm -hmm. so if i value home money you know relationships love i had there's a fear of losing that and so over time you know and and especially since leaving new york in 2019 coming to southeast asia living out of a backpack Mm -hmm. my coping mechanism my defense mechanism was to literally own nothing to value nothing and it was like if i don't have anything i have nothing to lose and so so taking on this nomadic lifestyle where i'm i'm living in i'm moving houses every three to six months i'm traveling i I lit for a long time i mean even 
it, now it's changing partly i'm putting more energy into into you know changing this but it's like literally everything i owned has been in a backpack mm -hmm. and i can and i can at any minute i can take the things that i own i can throw it in my backpack and i can leave tomorrow morning and and it's like like this is like a conscious awareness it's like it, like i i have you know i i have these visions of like like okay like if if this goes wrong like tomorrow morning throw the shit in the backpack go hey, you know yeah but you're putting so much energy into manifesting those by putting so much energy into thinking that's going to happen well right it, it, but the, but this is the chiron yeah, like yeah. this this is the whole medicine it's like when that, you're not aware of it consciously right like that this is a thing for you and and I can offer that stability and groundedness to other people. Like other people, like I get comments all the time. Like I oh, feel that with you. Like we can just be. Like you're so grounded. Right. And I can I can give that. I can offer that. But except to myself. And that's the myth of Chiron. Is he was the master healer. He could heal everybody else. But when he got hit with an arrow, he was unable to heal himself. Mm -hmm. And that's. And so that, that this is the Chiron and if, and, and for everybody, it's their own thing, whatever yeah. house it's in. Yeah. Yeah. I can talk about know? mine in a minute, but I want to yeah. go into yours. So, um, <sighs> so <laughs> sorry. no, like, it's great. I just yeah. love sometimes like in my podcast, like letting it sink in. Um, so knowing this about yourself, we're going to talk about the other things related, but knowing this particular thing about that you run away from stability and groundedness, even though this is the thing you crave the most. How can you create, how can you turn this into a positive thing for yourself? Like, how can this serve you? Well, I think the first and the most obvious thing is to be aware of my reaction mm -hmm. the next time something happens. It's like, now that I've observed myself, now it's like, like opening up this portal has it's like i've opened up a, i've shined light on a huge blind spot mm -hmm. that like literally i i couldn't see it like literally was not aware until you started talking about it it was like oh my god like there's this whole area that that i'm not um that that was literally a blind spot and so i think um just having the awareness around that and and listening to like it's like if something happens it's like okay what is my my body, my, my instinct might be saying run away, but hold on a minute, yeah. you know? And it's, it's like, what, what is, what's, what is the repercussion of that? And is that actually going to help what I'm, what I actually want? Yeah. And I was saying yesterday, like, that's the moment to lean in actually, because right. then you can heal it. Like these things happen so that we can change the story. You know, right. like we are the master creators of our story. Um, so like maybe putting a six month lease on something or like somehow giving yourself this physical sense of security around you. Yeah. And, and so right now I'm, um, you know, my, my living situation has been slowly putting down roots, mm -hmm. but it's still been a little bit unstable. Um, that in the, in the last two months or so that's shifted and I've been putting, it, it's funny because I was already starting to do this and now I'm like really like, this is the thing. Yeah. This is, this is like priority. Number one is make a home mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like buying plants and Aww. thing, you know, like making, you know, picture frames and like oh, th that. things that I would never, you know, I can't put my plants in a backpack, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I love this. And, and, but, but now I'm, 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 very conscious of this and so i'm like okay i'm going to i'm going to make this a comfortable home and put down roots and i think um i i think another part of that i haven't i haven't really like um dove into this yet but i think just just roots in the community and yeah. you know like i've always had roots but it's like i but but even then i'm still i'm i'm skittish it's like it's like yeah i put down roots but like not too deep like yeah, don't. like you never reach out to me to hang out. Like I'm always like, Dan, come to this thing. And we see each other a lot like out and about and we always drop in and have an amazing conversation. And even today, like we're okay, we're making a podcast, but we hung out for like two hours before and it was so fun. Like we were just right. talking, we did rape, we meditated. 
like i would love to do more i was thinking like why don't we do more of this and yeah well and and i've i've been thinking the same thing and and it's like this this you know thinking like okay i'm i'm um i already knew that i was going to be putting down roots and so it's been coming up like who do i who do i want to spend my time with who are the people like literally i have a list of people that are like cuz i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty decisive about mm -hmm. like i don't i don't just hang out with anybody um and and so like i want to be intentional about mm -hmm. like who am i going to build relationships with going forward where am i going to put down roots yeah cuz this is your emotional security right yeah community yeah and and that's 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 a huge pillar like mm -hmm. it's like more than anything even more than a, a physical house it's yeah. like that's actually like that's what makes you feel good to live you know like that's what makes everything matter <laughs> right because uh, you can live in a house by yourself in the middle of nowhere and then you're just in a house by yourself you know right um the other thing that you talked about was uh self-love i would love to go into this yeah yeah and then there's also there's another thing that i want that i want to get to mm -hmm. but um yeah so the other component is the self-love and self-worth and the i've i've my whole life I've had this feeling that I don't matter that mm -hmm. I could, I could literally die and it, and nobody would notice I could, I could be gone tomorrow and it, and it wouldn't matter. And I think this is also to do with the voice speaking up like it, like this, this feeling that I don't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't have value. I don't, that I'm not, I'm not contributing. And so that's, I, I feel like this is actually, um, you know the home and the roots and stuff like that that in, that's in the bag i just have to do it mm -hmm. um this has become like the priority is like um you know because because i can i've always known that i have this sort of deficit um but but now and 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 i've always avoided it and that that's part you know part of this whole thing is like mm -hmm. like the thing that you need to heal and grow the most is what you naturally run away from. It scares the shit out of you. Right. It's like, ah! It can hit overwhelm very fast. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't, it's like, it's scary, it's uncomfortable. And, um, and, I've, and, and I've come up, my mind has come up with all sorts of judgments and excuses not to go in that direction. And, but I, I can see now, like I can, I, it's like, um, it's kind of amazing because I can, it's like, it's like purpose. Like I can, I can feel it. It's like, this is the thing to, to explore, mm -hmm. um, to, to develop that self love. And, and I, I know that if, if, and when I, I, you know, get there, I, th I think it's a practice. It's mm -hmm. an ongoing you know, sure. state of being, but, but I, I feel like if I can do that, um, then, then I'm unstoppable. It, like n nothing can hurt me. It doesn't matter how much or little money, stability, houses, whatever. It's like, as if, if I love myself, mm -hmm. then, then it's like, you don't need anything else. Like you can, you can be a billionaire and it's like, you know, well, but did you love yourself? Yeah. And it's like, what, you know, like what, if not. And this is the biggest gift that you can give the world because you've been on such a unconscious conscious journey of figuring out how to love yourself just for being a beautiful pure soul in the timeline just for coming down into the timeline you are loved by the universe by everyone around you by yourself and when you allow yourself to drop into that knowingness in whatever way you figure that out whatever journey that is for you so many people are also in the same journey right now. And even mm. just having you share this, like with the people who are going to listen to this podcast, like I feel like it is such a beautiful thing to just be like, I don't have it figured out. I'm right. figuring it out right now and it's okay. You know, and we're, we're all in this together. I think that's the big thing. It's like everyone feels whatever it is, is their thing. They feel like they need to go run away, be alone because if they mm -hmm. speak it out, then suddenly they're not going to be accepted by the people that like, by the people that they love and the people that love them. 
so like even us talking the other day like you were you were like yeah but don't you don't you <laughs> also have this thing where you don't and i was like no this is not my thing like, like you don't feel this <laughs> like, what <laughs> yeah i was like no I, i've always just loved myself you know like i i know that i'm always guided and protected by the universe i know my higher self is always with me like i just love at the end of the day i just love myself you know and we all have our things yeah. and so for me yes vibrationally i can put that out in the world like yes i am someone who loves myself but you have a even bigger gift because you came from not to to the knowing you know in whatever way that journey is for you and right. like people are like yeah but what is it like if this is their thing they're also trying to figure out by you one sharing about it letting go of any shame around it mm -hmm. and then also being like yeah i figured it out in my way this isn't what it is like people are like gonna eat that up you know right and yeah and and it's like because I've been there, because mm -hmm. I've, I've felt it and I've suffered through it so intensely that once I can alchemize that, yeah. you know, then, then I can, I can offer that. Yeah. Um, and imagine how your vocal channeling will be once that you are literally emitting the vibration of self-love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like yeah. that is the biggest gift is like someone can sit with you and they send this vibration out and they're like, oh, I feel it. I feel it, you know, like somatically like transmit in, in yeah. my body. I feel it. Yeah. And that's so beautiful. This is why I'm, I since I've ever known you to change, I'm like, do it, do it, do it. But it sounds like you need to go. You need to get to that knowingness first so that when mm. you do transmit the vibration, it's this is your gift. Like, I feel like you've become aware of your gift first. Like your, I guess the chanting is like a tool. The to mechanism. Yes, the yeah. mechanism. And then you were like, yeah, but what am I broadcasting? Right. And, and there, there's this sort of, um, for me, there's this kind of pressure to, it's like, um, to, to make something that sounds good. To, it's like an external like like make it sound good for the other person but it's like it's like the opposite it's like no actually all i need to put attention on is the vibration in myself mm -hmm. and and i don't have to worry about what comes out because that because it'll transmit yeah that. And this is what we were talking about before we started the podcast just now we're like the new earth is a vibration it is a, mm -hmm. it is a vibrational state of being and when we're in this vibration literally everything we do is transmitting that to other people right so you can chant you can sit in a coffee shop you can just be wherever you are and it's going to shift the energy of the people who are interacting with you and energetically even if they don't ever speak to you yeah and that that component has been um you know the self-worth the self-love thing is like the this this feeling that i need to do something mm -hmm. to be of value and especially as a guy you know masculine and like, you know business and money or you know it's like this feeling this this it's like i have to do tricks i have to be smart i have to be clever i have to build things or something in order to in order to have yeah, value yeah. and it's like and you already tried all of those things babe and how did that go well it I I feel like I've made some great things. I I feel no, like I've Again, what I'm saying is you are you are an amazing programmer. You are you did all the tech things. You made all these things with your hands in New York. Right. But at the end of the day, how did that go in your body? Like how did that feel? It didn't it didn't it wasn't fulfilling. Yeah. And that's that's why I I left that life or the, you know that this previous, you know, I had a career built around around making beautiful things and and i got to a point at the end where it was just so empty it was like i was i, w I was you know part of these teams and we would create amazing stuff and people would people would come to it and they would see it and they would be like oh my god this is incredible and i was just like to me it was just empty it was just like eh, like mm -hmm. this isn't th th what are we doing what th this is this doesn't that to me this doesn't have value and it's like it might be a cool light show or something but it's like it it, it wasn't fulfilling me mm -hmm. and 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 in that i also it was a great sense of um it fed into the the lack of self-worth because i was always looking at other people's work i was always looking at the people who were 
further along comparing yourself comparing myself and it was like yeah but it's not like theirs it's not as beautiful as i want as i thought it would be or something and it's like you know so so that would you know feed back on itself but yeah and 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 yeah it wasn't fulfilling and Mm -hmm. and i ended up kind of you know it's it's i'm still kind of transitioning to you know finding like trying to figure out what is you know but but i think I think the the key in all of that is that I don't have to do anything that I can just that I that I have value just, without without doing tricks just by being <laughs> just being the beingness yeah like everyone's running around trying to do something when they just need to be or just accept they don't need to do anything yeah and I I noticed this too like um about people who have like yeah the self love journey is I had an ex-boyfriend that you know, uh, where I know that they don't love themselves and it does not matter how much love I pour into Mm. them. If they don't love themselves, it's like, of course they're not going to let my love in because they don't believe it. Like if they don't love themselves and they're not going to believe that I would, anyone would love them. And so it was just like me just dumping so much energy into them when it was really the work that they needed to do for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to share about my Chiron, which I, people might find interesting, is mine is in Cancer, which is all about family and community. Mm. Uh, so it's just like the most ironic thing ever because it's so accurate of my timeline. Like I've always had problems with my family, you know, leaving my religion. I call it a cult. It meant that my entire community that I grew up with, every single person I ever knew was like, bye, like we are done. We don't want to talk to you. Um and also in the same way my family also disconnected from me so this has been like my biggest pain point and my journey was am i okay being alone like even if no one else wants to be hanging out with me like and what i realized too was i spent many years people pleasing because i wasn't okay being alone so this is what i mean about the masks like putting these masks on of like i am this person i help you in this way or i do this thing and i was building communities but because my vibration w- was in a place where I wasn't being my authentic self, I was attracting in communities that I didn't actually want to be in, you know, like mm-hmm. digital nomads, like remote work, you know, like all of this stuff that I like, but look back and just kind of laugh at, you know? Yeah. And when, during COVID, this was a big thing. Like I, I was really like, okay, do I love hanging out by myself? And like, even with this ex-boyfriend I was talking about with Andy, like, I really had to face that part of myself because we were dating and he would literally want to live in a separate house, only speak at certain times of the day. Like he didn't want to be with me. I was like, are we even together? You know, like, and, th- and it was so triggering for me. And then I, I, oh, I had a really beautiful ayahuasca trip where I was just like, no, I'm good. You know, like I love myself. Mm. I am okay being on my own because I've always loved myself. But when I was in connection to someone else who really didn't love themselves and didn't want to be around me it makes you question everything because it's just this constant negative reflection so Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah am i good enough should i be doing something else and then when i was like no no no, i'm good i love myself i actually really love spending time on my own now like one of my favorite things is taking afro to the waterfall and just being in nature because i'm never Mm -hmm. alone like And then from that vibration, every single person that I have in my inner community, my outer community are people that I are resonating with me at that vibration. Mm -hmm. And then I also know exactly what kind of community I want to build and be in because I know who I am and my authentic version. And there's some days where, yeah, I don't have it all figured out or I'm super emotional or I'm just annoyed. You know, like I'm not my quote unquote best self, but the people around me love me. Like I've had many times with you where I'm like, Wah! all these things are happening and you're like okay yeah let's just talk about it you know like yeah t- give it to me what's going on and then i'm just like ah, and then i go ah, because i feel accepted for who i am i feel okay being in my tribe for who i am mm. and it feels like my baseline now is it better feel better being with this person and their energy than it does being alone Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't feel better being around them, then why not just hang out by myself? Like I really love hanging out by myself. Um, So 
Yeah, but I, I also sense like, this is why I was saying to you yesterday about this idea of everything that is our trigger is an opportunity for us to connect more and also lean in to ourselves, to our community, to our higher self. And I notice this a lot of times that even when things are going really well in my partnership with Faraday or my community, sometimes like one thing can trigger it. Someone can act crazy in some way or in a way that hurts my feelings. And I'm like, okay, I want to completely throw all of my community away. I want to just run away from everyone. Mm. I want to break up with fair, like whatever. Like I can just feel like this inner part of me wants to run away. Yeah. And then I'm, I have amazing godfather, I have amazing people in my life that are like, Brittany, in this moment is when you need to lean in. This is an opportunity to heal all of those things. And I'm so grateful to have these positive reflections of people who get it and are like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know your trauma. Here's how you can heal it, you know, and it's been really transformative. I feel like my relationship with Faraday is like the first one where I'm like, yeah, this, this person is my life partner. I'm invested all the way. Yeah, we don't have it all figured out, but I don't need to run away even when things come up. Like, it is safe to be in this dynamic. And I think it's also because for most of my life growing up, it wasn't safe to be in tribe even though that's what I craved the most. It literally, they were brainwashing me yeah. and suppressing me and like all of these things. But well, now, and conditional. Yeah, it was like, yes, it wasn't unconditional. Like, right, love. it wasn't you. It was you have to follow yeah. the protocol. And this is why like, um, like I have I had people tell me like, Brittany, you could totally make a cult. But I think my soul chose to be born into a cult so that I never make one. Because like I want everyone to be unconditionally themselves. And if we vibe, we vibe. If we don't, that's okay, but like I still accept you for who you are, but I might not hang out with you every day, you know? Mm. So, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. Chiron and Cancer. Yeah, well, and, and it, I, it's, in, it's so interesting because it's different for everyone. And like, yeah. you know, you, you not wanting to be alone, it's like for me, being alone is the default. And that's, mm. and, and I think also possibly another coping mechanism with, is, is this extreme, intense uh, independence. Mm -hmm. Like, a non-reliance a reliance on anything external because of a fear that i like i can't rely on it if it, mm -hmm. if if that person or this thing outside of me drops out then and so so the mechan the coping is is to withdraw and disconnect be completely independent in myself yeah yeah, yeah. um but i didn't and, and so i've i've learned to be alone really well except for the self acceptance and the self love like i mm. i can enjoy myself alone but there it's like the deficit of that so interesting like we all have our things you know and all of it i feel like comes back to the baseline of like connected do we feel okay to be connected to ourselves do we feel okay to be connected to our tribe like it's all like this opportunity for separation more or just dis like disconnection or connection mm. i feel like in all of these things and as we wake up in like a mass consciousness level those of us that are choosing to be more you know self-aware are choosing to lean in and be like okay let's figure this out in a way that feels good in my body let's like talk about it with each other let's be safe places for each other to and, and be open about it like yeah. it's okay like yeah, yeah. We're, we're never gonna have it figured out almost the point is we're not meant to we're supposed yeah. to keep growing our consciousness you know right. like challenges will keep happening but they can be more fun when we do it together you know like if you had discovered this on your own versus us hanging out and talking about it like you know which one's more fun oh yeah it's been so fun mm -hmm. it's yeah it was like yeah <laughs> it's been so good yeah amazing okay i am getting sweaty so okay. uh is there anything else that you want to share with the v the beautiful souls who are listening is there any last words um i don't know i mean i guess i i i do want to mention that um i am starting my own podcast exploring finally yeah I know. I've been trying to get him to do this for years. I know. I know. You're not the only one. I mean, that's, yeah, it's like my whole life. You got to have a podcast. Yeah, you got to yeah. have a thing. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, um, I've been dabbling with it. I've done a couple of episodes, feeling it out. And I feel like now I've, I've found the thread. It's like, I've found the thing that, that I need right now, at least for the, for this point in time, this is the thing to explore is yeah. the self-love, self-worth, stability, um, and yeah, so that's. So I will do you, like, are you, is this a live link I can put so people can follow your journey? Yeah. Okay. So I'll add that in the, the notes. So you guys go follow Dan Baker and, um, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. It's like, 
this is your journey you know like you share your journey you share where you're at it's actually like the most relatable thing if you started your podcast having it all figured out already okay that's great you know but like it's way more juicy to be like i don't actually know how this is gonna end and and this this is for me this is really scary Mm. like like this is so uncomfortable for me to put myself out there and and be honest and talk about how basically how imperfect i am you Mm -hmm. know i mean this is terrifying for me how exciting right yeah yeah Yeah. and it's like and it's like this but but it's like and and this is in a way this is how i know that this is what i need to go towards Mm -hmm. i need i need to go into that Mm -hmm. that's beautiful you lean in yeah yeah wow okay if you don't know already i love this man very much thank you for being on my podcast did you have fun Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So if you guys don't realize like we basically talk like this all the time whenever we're together. So you're just like getting a little hour glimpse into our vibration. I love our conversations together. I want to do more of these podcasts and I'm always happy to be on your podcast if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. To many more connection and vibrational sharing. And honestly, I'm just super excited when you get to the point where you're like ready to share your chancing in a way that is mm. like, you know, like, like you're saying, like people are like, you need to do this. And I'm also, I'm one of these people. I'm like, you need to do this. <laughs> but it, it, what's beautiful is the journey. You have your whole life to get there. I think that's, what's nice. Like yeah. I, I also have like the download I shared with you. Uh, why not? I'm like, I'm going to host Tantra immersions. Like I was like, why, why haven't I done this? Like mm. literally sharing the vibration of beingness with people and helping them feel safe to do that. And like, that's the workshop that I need. Yeah. Like I would like, I'll be there. <laughs> like that, you know, it's like, like I, I need to lean into that. Like yeah. that's, that's scary being vulnerable and, and just being simply being mm-hmm. with other people and not like dropping the need to, to, perform yeah to, to do yeah you know. so beautiful okay well i am sending everyone who's listening and watching lots of love i hope you are inspired by this and go figure out what your chiron is uh c-h-i-r-o-n if you're looking it up yeah do and it yeah do, do it, it do it <laughs> <laughs> okay and get ready <laughs> <laughs> like it's good <gonna>, like <laughs> like it's gonna it's gonna open up a portal that like right, once you you, once you open this door, man. Things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, th- this has made more sense to me than any other astrological explanation. Mm-hmm. Like like discovering this was like a, and maybe it's just where I'm at in my development. But it was like, um, you know, because I've been into astrology and it's mm-hmm. like, but but opening this up was like, oh my god like this makes more sense than than anything i've seen i completely agree with you i have a very good friend who opened this up for me and she just sent me like this 20 minute voice note of here's your chiron this is what it means and i was like oh fuck you know like yeah (laughs) okay no not that (laughs) anything but that but also i feel like there's this big landing in your body of like oh, this makes sense. Yeah. Like when you look back on your timeline of your life, it's just like, of course, yeah, this totally, of course, everything makes sense. I've, I've known it. I've known it all along. Yeah. Always known it. So like a coming home to like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is the yeah. work I need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Send you guys all lots of love. <laughs> We're going to keep vibing out here, but maybe get some more water. And I hope you have a beautiful day and see you in the next episode. Bye.